Welcome back, everyone. Please find your seats as soon as you are able to. Asuka is heading for a better view. <laughs> good colleagues, good friends, noble alumni, please move rear ends to seats as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. It's time for, it's time for the second cool thing about recent and current research here at DICU. Uh, so it gives me great pleasure to welcome Joanna Bergström, who just a short while ago was promoted to associate professor here at DICU, or lecture, so congratulations, Joanna. Um, Thank you. Joanna joined the department back in 2015 as a postdoc from Finland. She has been at the forefront within the department of developing experimental HCI research here, trying out all sorts of new gadgets um, in her research and publishing great papers about it. Her research focuses on many things, but currently on virtual reality, body-based user interfaces, working with human perception and motor skills. Uh, and today, she'll introduce us to one of her most recent research highlights, I think, namely how to apply virtual reality for movement learning. So please, Joanna, take it away. Thank you, Jakob. Um, yes, so uh, virtual reality, uh, it allows people to learn uh, from moving in, uh, for instance, physically uh, impossible or risky uh, or otherwise simulated uh, situations. Uh, with a head-mounted display, like uh, the one on my PhD student's uh, forehead here, um, or uh, here uh, on, the, on the hands of this person, um, you can have a first-person perspective uh, into the virtual world. Uh, a virtual reality uh, user uh, change uh, what they is see, and my PowerPoint crashed, but uh, just a minute. <laughs> I have a lot of videos. No, okay. We're kind of running on a theme tonight. <laughs> yes. Uh, almost, almost, almost. Yes, let's, let's try to make it this way. And let's see if the video will roll now. I'll just take my mouse away from here. Um, yes, so the user um, can can see. Um, they can they can uh, change what they see by turning their head or moving their body around. Uh, by by walking around, they can grasp uh, things uh, with their hands uh, and see how the virtual hands grasp the same things and throw them around. Um, so here you could see how the physical movements uh, of the user are mapped to what they uh, see uh, and do in the virtual world from the first person perspective. Uh, virtual reality can be used uh, effectively to learn about simulated environments uh, such as physically uh, impossible or risky or, or simulated situations because people can move in them like they do in the real world. Uh, one, uh, one example of projects uh, we have done is with the uh, Rikshospitalet uh, and the Copenhagen uh, Academy for Medical uh, Education and Simulation called GAMES. Um, their problem was that physician students uh, training uh, and, and exams was uh, um, traditionally uh, done uh, for emergency rooms uh, by basically reading scenarios from books and, and answering multiple choice questionnaires. And of course that doesn't create the, the, the time pressure which, uh, which is uh, critical in decision making uh, in, in emergency rooms uh, than when they, then when they really get there. Um, so they wanted to do something and, and instead of these uh, book uh, written scenarios, uh, they, uh, they simulated 
physical mockups. So what they did was that they re they hired uh, actors uh, to to uh, act as nurses and and patients and so on. Um, but of course uh, that became very uh, expensive and impossible uh, in the beginning of the pandemic because they would basically need uh, multiple people in an emergency room to exam a single student uh, at a time. Um, so therefore we, uh, pre uh, we, we helped them um, to prepare the students into real uh, emergency situations by using virtual reality. So uh, from so this is a basically again a first person perspective that you see uh, through a headset. So uh, we we took a 360 degrees high resolution uh, video uh, of this acted uh, situation in an emergency room. So uh, that's a COVID patient who actually uh, coughs uh, there uh, in the in the film. Um, and uh, and the point of this is uh, is that. The, the student can really uh, experience being there. So they can, they can, uh, they can look around the room. Uh, the nurses are actually directly addressing them as the second person that, what should I do? The, and then report something about the patient's uh, condition. And then you can uh, pose multiple choice questionnaires with, uh, with some time pressure, which the student, the physician student then need to uh, answer. Uh, so thereby the students can um, experience better than by reading their own pace uh, a text from a book the, the urgency uh, of the situation and the manner of life and death and, and thereby we can train them uh, more effectively and also exam their, uh, their readiness to, to the real situations. Um, however, uh, in this and for many uh, other uh, applications uh, for virtual reality, we can't reproduce uh, the environment and, and your virtual body, your body in virtual reality uh, completely. So for example, the hands you see there don't look exactly uh, as your uh, own. Uh, you can't feel the objects you touch, your fingers go through them, through virtual objects. Um, and you can't also uh, walk beyond the limits of your physical room. So maybe this emergency room would fit in into your living room or, or lab at the at the university or hospitality, but but you can't uh, you can't run across a football field uh, beyond the limits uh, of of the of the walls in your physical space. Um, uh, also, a completely realistic simulation, um, of course, is not usually even desirable um, for, for VL ap applications because, like said, the potential is that you can experience completely different worlds, such as those physically uh, risky or, or distant uh, situations. Uh, therefore, our research in, in human-computer interaction uh, and, uh, and virtual reality uh, is about exploring what what can we do uh, and what happens when we change people's uh, virtual bodies, how they look like and what you can feel with them and how they move. One of, uh, one of the examples uh, of our recent research um, is about how to give uh, haptic feedback of touching uh, things uh, in virtual reality. So here you have a physical object, the red one, which you physically grasp uh, at the same time when you uh, grasp uh, the virtual one. So this way, the passive physical things we happen to have lying around can be used for giving haptic feedback by co-locating the virtual objects uh, with those uh, physical ones. However, of course, uh, like said, we want to simulate different situations in virtual reality, so maybe we don't have uh, the same objects um, lying physically around that we want to show uh, in the virtual environment. Um, and in order to um, present multiple virtual objects with a, a single physical object, we developed a technique that can be uh, used used for representing multiple objects of different sizes. Um, so this technique uh, resizes basically 
your grasp. So it changes the way your physic, uh, uh, your virtual fingers move um, uh, with the movements of your physical fingers. So here the green one, for instance, uh, could be a virtual object and the black one a physical object. So what the technique does is that it takes the takes the size of your grasp. So for instance, the distance between the, uh, the fingers of your physical and your virtual hand, which you first see exactly at the same uh, positions. Uh, next, it takes the distance uh, of your grasp toward an, uh, or, or your hand uh, to the object, um, and then. Uh, and then it takes the difference between the object sizes. So if I have a, a larger uh, or a smaller virtual object here than the physical one, uh, it takes the, uh, the difference between those. Uh, then it simply um, interpolates those, uh, those differences so that when you move toward the object you're grasping, your virtual fingers uh, close faster than your physical fingers, uh, and thereby, when you reach the virtual object, you can you can feel it. You can feel the physical object at the same time, even if they are of different sizes. Um, so we studied how uh, many, basically, or how 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 to what extent uh, this difference between different objects uh, can be left unnoticed. Um, and the outcome of these are, are basically functions that estimate the detection thresholds, what, what people uh, have um, of, of distinguishing the object sizes. So basically, how, um, with what probability they believe they are actually grasping the object they see. Um, and these, can be, uh, these uh, functions can be basically used uh, in designing physical proxies for, for haptic feedback in virtual reality. So for instance, to design and map the, uh, the virtual objects you see to the ones that you happen to have in your living room where you're, where you're using uh, virtual reality. A second example um, is a project where the idea is that there exists a perfect body for a given task um, in, uh, in VR. Um, Human-computer interaction researchers have introduced different kinds of virtual bodies or, or avatars um, that can improve task performance, uh, such as elongated arms to reach further. Um, here we wanted to optimize uh, such bodies, so we optimized uh, an arm and fingers uh, of the virtual body uh, with an iterative approach um, in which the the fitness uh, function basically takes, for instance, the time and accuracy of some target selection or whatever task we, uh, we give, um, and then uh, it, it either increases or decreases, uh, for instance, a length of a body part uh, until it converges to some optima, optimal body for that particular task. Uh, so this, this basically showed that we can improve how effectively people can move uh, in VR by, by optimizing their bodies. Um, a third example uh, of, of our uh, recent research projects is a technique to control multiple uh, virtual uh, hands simultaneously. Um, our technique allows uh, a virtual reality uh, user to reach further and faster uh, without a need to learn a new way of, of controlling a virtual hand. So it simply maps uh, the movements of a single hand to multiple virtual hands uh, like in here. Um, we studied the effectiveness of this technique and, and um, to up to uh, 64 hands and found that uh, while a larger number of hands uh, was effective um, in say task completion time and some other performance metrics, it did have a cognitive uh, demand of figuring out uh, that if an object is there, which of the nearby hands should I uh, use basically to, uh, to grasp it. Um, so we showed that it is possibly, uh, possible to uh, effectively control multiple limbs, uh, but, but also found some insights about the trade-off, about the other possible consequences um, of dramatically uh, changing our bodies this way. 
Okay. Um, uh, in addition to research, uh, we have several uh, student projects on on virtual reality and moment learning. Um, so I will show some from a new course uh, in our bachelor program at, at DICU, which I launched uh, last winter. So in this one, uh, the students uh, designed a technique to fly around. So ba basically they put a jet engines kind of on, on the palms so, and then by uh, turning your palms you can uh, fly in, uh, in, a, uh, in the sky in a 3D virtual environment. Um, here uh, the students developed a way to augment uh, a movement path of a ball. So they, they estimate a movement path when you start a throw and then they show it uh, and the idea here is that maybe th uh, we could uh, train, uh, train um, better uh, throwing uh, with, with such uh, visual uh, feedback when, when the throw starts. Um, okay, I'll just skip to the last example. Um, here, uh, here the students uh, introduced uh, basically a drift, kind of a drift uh, or a lack um, to the virtual motions of the hands so that it would correspond um, uh, a resistance of water uh, basically for a, for a diving simulation you could say and of course it's not physical uh, physical resistance in the movements but visual so here you can see the, the shadow hand is, uh, is the real movement which goes much faster and then the, the opaque hand uh, follows a bit after um, so, so here the purpose was to, to um, induce an experience of really being uh, underwater and how it feels uh, like to move there. Um, yes, um, so of course uh, maybe this looks like that. What happens to my microphone? Um, yeah, so, so of course uh, this uh, may appear that we are uh, having a lot of fun, which we are. Uh, but of course, uh, with these we have also uh, shown uh, new ways to give sensory feedback for moments in, in virtual reality. Um, uh, that we can, we can make virtual bodies that are better uh, than our realistic ones. Um, and and we, have, we have gotten insights of how it is to control very different bodies than, uh, than our own. Um, and we have also uh, explored learning and training of moments uh, in VR uh, for, for the real world applications like, like for medical education uh, and those student projects. So, uh, so thereby the, the human computer interaction research for VR, uh, even if, if having a lot of fun can help to ensure uh, validity uh, and, and help to interpret the results of VR studies across uh, such different uh, fields. Uh, of, of research and, and hopefully also to increase the effectiveness of, of VR in, uh, in, in learning uh, in different application areas. Thank you. <laughs>